Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. It's Polyester here and today was Thursday so we had a Dead by Daylight dev stream and as always I'm going to try to boil that down and condense it for you to get to the meat of what was in that dev stream today. And in my opinion the most uh, important news that came out of the dev stream is for console players and the fact that all of you who play the game on console are getting free cosmetics. Free. Soon. When? Soon. With the next patch. When's the next patch coming? Soon. But whenever that patch comes, you will have free cosmetics, and I'll show you what they are. So back in June, we had on PC the one-year birthday of the game, and there were daily challenges for us to uh, compete in as a community to hit targets for certain things we had to do in the game. And we met all of those. Um, there were five in all. And each day we were playing for new cosmetic items, and we got them all. And uh, now all of those items are coming to you on console. Why it's taking this long, I have no idea, but you're getting them, so better late than never, right? So the first day we competed, we were going for the Dweirder and the Bolo Machete for the Trapper. Second day was the Old School Windbreaker for Claudette and the Bloodlust Axe for the Wraith. Old School Windbreaker is similar to Science Fair Claudette. Day three saw Old Man Jake with the gray hair and the marked spike mall for the hillbilly. Day four was the classic sleeveless yellow tank top for Nea and the bridal saw for the nurse. And day five was as close as you're going to get to a street Meg on console, which is the red trim leather hoodie for Meg and the iron chuckles mask for the trapper. So these are variations of what some of the packs and TwitchCon codes were. The Dweirder is... Uh, variation on the Dweird, except he has black glasses on the Dweird and uh, no stubble. These are tweaked versions of basically the packs and TwitchCon codes, but they're better than nothing and uh, they're very welcome to PC players. I'm sure you console players are going to enjoy them as well. So they also announced that they are going to be selling a set of cosmetics, which will be the head case, and it's going to be um, alternate heads for uh, all of the survivors similarly priced to what they charge for it on Steam but that's coming your way this won't be free you will have to pay for it but at least it will finally be available to you I'm very glad for all of you console players to see console get some love and some uh, new cosmetics for all of you out there and that's gonna happen just in time for the PlayStation Experience upcoming this weekend put on by Sony in Anaheim and uh, Dead by Daylight is gonna have a booth there where they will be playing the game will there be any exclusives for PlayStation hmm I don't know I kind of doubt it but you never can tell we'll see what happens with that and then from there we went into the slides so let's see what I have for slides here Okay, what's next on the road map? They rearranged this a little bit from the previous week. Wraith update, the Wraith Cube seems to be first thing on the list now. The winter event after that. And the PTB or public test build where people on Steam can try out the new emblem scoring rework for the way that survivors are going to pip in the game. Um, that looks a kicked a little further down into the road, maybe sometime in December, who knows. And then after that, once they've gathered all the data for the PTB, PTB usually runs about a week for them to gather the data of the players playing in that pool and see how the system is working. And then they'll take that data and uh, either tweak it or just roll it out if it's working exactly the way they had hoped. And then the new uh, victory conditions for survivors will be in the game. Um, as far as the winter event goes... I don't know how denominational they're going to be because obviously people of different religious backgrounds around the world play the game. I don't know if it's going to be more than just snow and snowmen, something that is, you know, not denominational at all, or if we'll see like Trapper and Huntress as Mr. and Mrs. Claus. <laughs> Who knows? It'll be interesting to see. Um, this is something that's been going around on the internet. I, I wouldn't mind to see the hag all decked out in Christmas lights. That's pretty funny. Or um, my friend Nikita who is very good at graphics design sent this to me. The Lisa Sherwood holiday collection with her uh, Christmas tree onesie and Santa hat. I think that would be pretty cool but we'll never see that. 
I, I would I would like to see a Santa hat on any character, like Trapper with a Santa hat. I think it would be pretty funny, but I don't know if it'll happen. Just I mean, just give Hag back her red dress. Like, what's going on? She had a red dress for 24 hours and her ponytail and was never seen again. Just just let... She wants to cover up. She doesn't want to have that exposed booby all the time, you know? Like, let give her a dress back so she can cover up. Please, Lisa Sherwood. She wants, She's a modest woman, all right? Just give her her dress back. Anyway, I would think this would be hilarious, but it probably never happened. All right, back to the slides. Enough, uh, enough foolishness. Okay, so we went through all of that. Wraith Cube, he's pumping the iron. Every day he's getting a little closer. Hopefully in a week, week or two we will see the Wraith update. And they had that um, the link that I put out a couple weeks ago for everybody to sound off on what they thought about the pro proposed changes. They read all of it, and they said that they actually took into consideration some of the things that people said, and it influenced their decisions. So we'll see what the final product is for the Wraith. And, um, yeah, I was glad, very glad to hear that it was all constructive and productive conversation in that thread, and they read it, and... Um, moving forward that it helped so hopefully we'll see things like that again in the future um okay things that they are testing a fix for internally is um, a problem where a, the nurse blinks behind a house in Badham. i don't know what that is foundry generator placement i definitely know what that is <laughs> they want to fix that where you can um, actually drop down onto the generator in uh, the ironworks but it will get you banned if you get caught doing it in the game so i don't recommend it and you may have noticed that they moved the pallet back where it used to be outside the window of the ironworks. And they're still trying to figure out where they want to put that, it looks like. Um, killers starting without their ability. I have no idea what that is. I have seen a couple videos now of a huntress spawning into a map with trapper traps laying everywhere. And she can use them, which is quite interesting. The trap dress. <laughs> it's pretty funny to see a uh, huntress throwing hatchets and picking up traps like wow she's really buffed in that mode and uh okay motion blur effect correction don't know what that is okay things they're working on getting stuck in the shack palette i've seen that a couple of times now it's not fun if you get stuck in there if you're the killer and you see people stuck in there just like break the palette and count to 10 close your eyes and count to 10 and let the game resume. Be a good person on that one. Uh, mist and offering. So they're just they're trying to figure out what they want to do with the mist. They increased the mist to uh, handle FPS issues for all platforms, and I think they want to kind of control the level of mist the same way they took control of the level of lighting. You may see the mist offerings go away or change the amount of effect they can have. I'm not sure. But the mist can get pretty intense. If you if everybody brings thick in the mist, it can get pretty intense. And, okay, killer clipping and hooked survivors. Actually, they'll clip through any auras. Down people, you can see, you can see uh, auras being clipped all the time. That isn't a feature. That's a bug. It's not supposed to be like that. It is pretty cool, just like how we had the pallets flying up in the sky, that you can use that as information to figure out where the killer is but it's going to go away once they figure out how to fix that and then okay we're aware of this where did the trophies go on all platforms cannot connect to online services i've had that a little bit on pc character swapping spectate mode this is an annoying one that when you're dead and you want to spectate the remaining players that if somebody dies it goes back to spectating your own dead body and you have to click off of it that's annoying and they even got rid of the arrow buttons at one point that you have to remember where they are just to swap so hopefully that'll be fixed it's a it's a nuisance generator sound issues this is something i've only noticed on uh the red forest map maybe it exists on other maps where the generators sound like they're they're missing a piston they, they sound like they're sputtering they need a tune up once the generators are fully running they make weird noises and players being kicked out of matches. They are aware of that issue as well. Okay, this was kind of interesting. This was a um, statistic that they wanted to show the success rates of hitting skill checks. And so it goes here on the left. You can see rank 20s all the way to on the right-hand side. 
rank ones and then um, these bar graphs show for PC PS4 and Xbox one and so you see here at rank 20 the success of the rate of success of getting either a good or a great skill check is about 75% for rank 20s when it gets up to it looks like maybe 91% 90 and a half percent for rank ones rank ones are pretty good at hitting those skill checks um, I don't know if I'm in the 90 percentile I might need to put in some work on the get good um, skill check simulator there and then uh, the red line here you can see the chances of getting uh, hitting the greats looks like great uh, rank 20 is about 12 percent of the time and rank one looks like they're hitting that great 30 percent of the time which is uh, pretty pretty good anyway I thought that was interesting and this actually made them rethink how they want to work the brand new part because I think they think installing the brand new part it may be too easy which I kind of agree it is too easy unless the killer actually interrupts you there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to install a brand new part so they're talking about making that a little bit more difficult honestly if I mess up on a brand new part nowadays when I'm not under pressure that's on me I there's no reason why I should fail that skill check so that was some interesting statistics and then from there they went they brought in McLean if you don't know who McLean is uh, basically this guy is McLean <laughs> this is what McLean looks like the weird is basically based on him and he's a programmer so he came in and he showed um, part off part of the Unreal 4 engine and how they make perks in the game. So this, he said, was the uh, the skeleton for the creation of the botany knowledge perk. And then this is what Decisive Strike looks like, which is a little more intense. Botany knowledge, I guess, is a pretty basic perk. Decisive Strike has a lot more elements going on in it. And then he showed like one of his quality assurance missions is to go through, and he had to test uh, why the Wraith wasn't completely losing bloodlust when he cloaked but it was just slowly degenerating and he had to replicate that bug and fix it and he showed the process of that so there was a lot of the programming aspect of um, what goes into the game so I'm not going to go into the programming part of it if you're interested in it you can go watch the actual dev stream to see all of the things that he explained about what goes in to being a programmer and um, I don't know if this was done on purpose like last week we had the graphics designer who showed the Sally lantern head and how it was created and now this week we've had McLean with the programming and I don't know if it's, this is done purposefully or just a happenstance out of these filler segments of the dev stream but uh, it's really humanizing the team in my opinion and um, giving us more of an appreciation for them to show more behind the scenes and the people behind it and and the hard work and um, how much actual work does go into this it gives us a better appreciation for these people they are human beings after all and as much as we're like oh the game's broken I want the game to work or this or that or I didn't get enough Halloween items <laughs> like these people work hard and they're all doing their best and as much as the that meme gets slammed on the game for I think we did a pretty good job so far they are doing a good job like if they weren't doing a good job the game wouldn't be pulling in the numbers that it is because despite all the bugs we love this game and it's a great game and they're doing the best they can and they do deserve our appreciation and respect as human beings to acknowledge the hard work they're putting into it and I for one appreciate all of them and uh, it was nice to see these glimpses of the people behind the scenes and what they put into it so I think we could all cut them some slack like could we do a better job than they're doing probably not so let's cut them some slack and just realize they're all doing the best that they can they want the game to be the best that it can be and they're working on it so I think uh, sometimes we're a little too hard on them we expect perfection out of human beings which you know everybody has feet of clay and uh yeah they don't deserve all the grief they get so i appreciate these segments that they put in to humanize it a little more and i think it's pretty cool 
Oh, and one other big piece of news that I forgot today is that a patch came out today which took all of the save files off of the Steam Cloud and they have put them onto their own servers at the Dead by Daylight offices. So they started out gradually with 10% of the save files and that seemed fine. They had no issues. They moved it up to 30% and it's so stable that now 100% of the save files are on the Dead by Daylight servers which should completely eliminate all of the loss of progress issues knock on wood so that's amazing to hear um, I'm still gonna back up my files every once in a while but hopefully the days of loss of progress are behind us and we won't have to worry about that anymore so um, yeah that's good news and they also talked about they had some some Q&A at the end said would you ever consider buffing Freddy which Freddy's name was not mentioned at all last week and they said yes that they would look at and see how he's performing and if you know if they felt it was necessary that they would but they don't have any plans for it right now um oh they also have more killer cosmetics in the work and works and matthew wanted to sneak something but he was told that he couldn't so killer cosmetics are on the way and they also said that since they're going to rework the ranking system that there would be some incentives for people who reach rank 1, possibly with cosmetics. Legacy 2.0? I don't know what that means. But they are going to incentivize people for making the grind up to rank 1 into what their leaderboards are going to look like once they change the ranking system down the road. So that's intriguing, but nothing set in stone for that. Okay, so that's all the news I have for you guys today. Um, the big things were the console cosmetics coming and the save files are being held on um, the Dead by Daylight servers. So we'll see you next time. As always, thanks for watching. Take care of one another. Bye-bye.